Welcome to the universe in a seashell, the podcast dedicated to science, life, and girl power. I'm Kara Bartek, and I'm your host. I'm a PhD, an author, and I want to make this world a more equal and opportune place, one girl at a time. From beautiful Freiburg, Texas. It's Kara, and I'm the host of the Universe in a Seashell, the podcast dedicated to science life and girl power. Yay! And I am here with my hiccupy co pilot, Caroline. Hi, guys. Okay. Do you think you can get your hiccups under control? Mm, okay, I think I got them un- un- uh. under control. <laughs> That sounded like a big one. It sounded like you swallowed it. You better be careful so your eyes don't like bug out of your I, head. I always swallow them. Okay, so how do you get rid of hiccups? Holding my breath. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we're just gonna have to fight through the hiccups, folks. Um, and if you hear a <laughs> on the audio, for this week's episode, just know we just ate dinner, right? I th- yeah. That's what I blame it on. We had a huge pasta we ate dinner. Onions, so the the onions. breath is gonna be smelling funky. Thank goodness they can't smell your breath through the microphone. They can, dude. What? Yeah. How's that? I don't know. <laughs> you know what? If they can, I feel very, very sorry for them. Okay. I am very sorry if you can smell it. So, sorry. (laughs) So, guys, I just want to remind everybody that I've got a few participants out there playing Bug Bingo with us. And if you want to play Bug Bingo with Caroline and I, uh, make sure that you go to one of my social media pages, either Instagram or Facebook, and share the video and tag three of your friends. And I'm going to be sending you your very own Bug Board. And what that's going to do is not only allow you to play a super awesome game that I've got all the rules and all that kind of cool stuff included in the bug bingo package, but I will also be entering you into a drawing for your very own bug collecting kit because I know everybody out there is super huge bug enthusiasts, right? Yeah. Do you like collecting bugs? Yeah. You do? Mm Mm-hmm. So what is your favorite bug then? Mm. Praying mantises. Ooh, well, guess what? We are in luck today because that's what we're going to be talking about. Yay! I love praying mantises. They're so, they're so weird. Sorry. That's okay. It's just too much pasta. Too much. Too many onions. Too many onions. I wonder. I wonder if bugs ever hiccup after they've had like a giant meal I of wonder... like a really like wiggly earthworm or something. I wonder if they ever fart. Well, that's probably a good question. We can. I know we... they poop pee, but I'm not sure if they fart. I guess that would be really dependent upon the fact of if they have gas. I don't know. That's probably uh, we need to look at that. That's a digestion issue. But but I want to give a huge shout out to one of my friends out there who has been sending me some cool pictures of her with bugs. And I'm going to ask her mom if it's okay if I share the pictures. She's way into praying mantises as well. Um, she's into basically all bugs. And she's also a Girl Scout, which I think is really, really awesome. So I'm going to ask her mom if I can share some of her photos on one of uh, my pages, maybe on the Instagram or on uh, Facebook. And you guys can check out... Uh, another super cool bug enthusiast. Uh, if you've got any pictures, go ahead and send send them to me. You can direct message me, uh, like I said, on Facebook, on Instagram, whatever you'd like to do. Or you can just send them to my email at universeinaseashell at gmail.com. That's universeinaseashell at gmail.com. Is it my friend Claire, Logan, or Mandolin? None of the above. Aw, who is it? 
I can't say. I gotta ask your mom for permission. Okay, so what we are going to be talking about today are praying mantises, which are kind of a strange bug, don't you think? Mm -hmm, They kind of are, but I don't know. They're, they look very alien. I would say, you know, bugs generally have a kind of a, a, a certain, a, a certain look to them that they're small. They have six legs and some wings, but praying mantises have this very odd head, right? To, to oh, me. geez. It looks like a dog snout. A dog snout? <laughs> oh yeah. It looks like, their head looks like a dog. But then it, like, curves in like a beak. Okay, I could see that. I could see that. It looks like a dog snout, but it also looks like a beak. Yeah, they're just, they're bizarre. And they've got those huge eyes. And they, like, their eyes are, like, so wide open. And their arms, like, hang, they're, like, up. But then they hang down. And they kind of walk weird, right? They don't. They're, like. Yeah. They're, like, it's kind of weird. They, like. They have like almost like they like a halting movement because they don't like some bugs will like really fast like they scurry. But a praying mantis kind of has a very strange, almost like a robot walk, don't you think? To me, it kind of looks like soldiers at war. Hut, two, three, four. Hut, a praying two, mantis. Two, three, four. Yeah. Okay, so let's let's talk about these guys. So mantises are in an order of insects that are called mantidea. Okay, and it contains over 2,400 species and about 430 genre in 15 families. So this, guys, to sum it all up, this is a huge, huge selection of bugs. There are a lot of praying mantises. Are there different types or just one type? There's over 2,400 species. Oh. Jeez. You must have been hiccuping when I was saying that. No, I thought you meant, like, them individually out there. Oh, no. Oh, no. I imagine that there's probably millions upon millions actually out there. No, I think it's trillions. I respectfully disagree. Why? I just, I don't know. It could be trillions, but that is a huge number. I know, but I just think it's trillions. Okay, okay. Keep on hiccuping, okay? (laughs) So this is, um, they're they're basically distributed all around the world, but generally in temperate and tropical habitats. They have triangular, triangular heads with bulging eyes that are supported on flexible necks. So this is something that we basically already know. Um... (laughs) Their bodies may or may not have wings. So, obviously, there are several different varieties. The one that we saw, I think, had wings. That green one. Yeah. and But, you know what? They, they don't seem to fly like, uh, you like, know, like, like a bee or anything. It's like for short distances almost. It's like kind of crickets, but no. it's kind of like crickets, how they propel. And but they, they just kind of like, jump up land but i bet there are certain species that are made for flight but anyway let's let's find out let's let's see what's going on with these praying mantises now they have uh like i said the elong- elongated bodies they may or may not have wings but they all have these four legs that are huge you know you briefly mentioned that how they kind of hang down and they they definitely look like they've got a, a huge vice gripper thing on there, right? Yeah. So what that is for is for catching and gripping prey, okay? Now, their upright posture, you know, they kind of stand up, they've got their... their, The back of them is down, but then they, like, hunch up. It's right. kind of weird. So that's kind of their their normal stance, and it sounds like what that is for is for psh, catching prey. Okay. Like at first they kind of look, they blend in with the leaf, and then once something flies by. Well, and this is how they got the name, praying mantises, because it looks Cause like it they're in a like prey. Right. Praying mantis. Right. Yeah, because, oh, because you know what? That could definitely be taken two ways, right? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so praying could be, you know, hunting for your food, and praying can also be the act of saying a prayer, having your hands folded. Praying. Right. And then there's praying. Right, so these mantises got their names because of that strange praying posture that they have a tendency to hold. Praying? Oh, yeah, that where their hands are, like, together. Yes, absolutely. So it kind of looks like that they're praying. It also means that they're catching, and it also means that they look like they're praying. Right. Kind of, I think. Yeah, that's how they got their names. Okay, now, I have some amazing facts that I got from Thought Company, okay? Are you ready to learn some facts about praying mantises? Oh, yeah. Okay, now, of those 2,400 species that we talked about, um, almost all of them live in the tropics. Almost all? Right, so that means the praying mantises that we see don't necessarily comprise the vast majority of praying mantises on earth there's actually a very small amount that live on north america in fact do let's we live see on south america or north uh we live on north america okay because i thought we lived on south no i'm weird <laughs> And it sounds like you're I not was... doing well in geography either. Oh, I'm learning geography right now, but I'm very flustered in geography, so I don't know. Yeah, so we're in North America, which which sounds, because, you know, especially since we are in Texas, it's very easy to assume that it's southern, but we're actually in the northern hemisphere, so that makes us North America. To me, southern would seem hotter and northern would seem colder. Yeah, so South America is like Brazil, Argentina, Chile, all of those. Chile? Chile. What's Chile? It's a country. In South America. It's very long and skinny. It sounds like... I don't know what it sounds like. Does it sound like the chili pepper? Yes! Yeah. Chile. Chili. But it's spelled a little bit differently. It's spelled with C-H-I-L-E. Not with an I on the end. Yeah. So anyway, so... Okay, so in North America... Look, you're getting me off topic. Okay? You so said in, Chile. That got me off topic. So in North America, we only have 18 native species of praying mantis. And there are tons in the tropics. Yep. So, but most often the praying mantises that we see in the United States are actually considered exotic species. Okay, now, what do you think I mean by exotic species? They don't really come around. Um, they don't really come around. Please explain yourself, because that made absolutely no sense. I don't know what I just explained. Well, on a good note, your hiccups seem to have stopped. <laughs> okay, so exotic species means that these are species that are not native to North America. Okay, so that means somebody brought them in, maybe a bug collector, maybe they came in, which a lot of times bugs actually come in on international shipments. A lot of times they'll come in fruit cargo, um, vegetable or crop cargo, and they will accidentally get exposed to places that they're not supposed to be. Mm, I get it. Okay, so this is what Thought Company says. You're more likely to find an introduced mantid species than you are to find a native praying mantis. The Chinese mantis was introduced near, near Philadelphia, Pennsylvania about 80 years ago. This large mantid can measure up to 100 millimeters in length. Okay, is so that long? It's, it's pretty long. Oh, jeez. Especially for... Um, a bug? A bug. Okay. Now, there's the European mantid, and it's pale green and about half the size of the Chinese mantid. European mantids were introduced near Rochester, New York, about 50 years ago. That's the one we saw. We are not in Rochester, New York. But it was, like, pale green. I don't know what we saw. 
I don't know what we saw either, Ben. Please don't cough into the mic. <laughs> <laughs> we need to, we actually, I've got, I've got a bunch of videos and pictures. This would be great. Maybe I'll post those up on the Facebook page and we can see if we've got any bug experts out there that can identify what species we saw. It was like green. And it was pretty big. Now, the these two mantises that I'm talking about, or mantids, so that's... Mantids. No, not mantids. <laughs> mantids. So, um, and, so I think this is like a cactus-cacti situation, cactus, where the plural cacti, is cactus, different. Cactus-cacti. Cacti. <laughs> I said cacti. Sounds like Popeye. No, it <laughs> sounds like the grossest thing ever. A cat pie? Oh, <laughs> a cat pie. <laughs> I'll pass on the cat pie. I'll pass on the cat pie. But anyway, so both of these um, mantids that I am talking about are actually common in nor the northeastern United States, okay? So that's not us, which is down in East. the south. So it's down and then you head east. Right? Yeah, from New York. But we're not we're we're not east. I know. Okay. I just want to make sure because we're it's like No, Caroline, south. you're you're definitely failing geography if you think we're east. We're south in North America. Right? Yep. And then you like go south and then go a little bit to the west. A little bit. Okay, <laughs> high five. Maybe you're not totally not, failing geography. I'm not that I, good uh, in geography. <laughs> but you got that. Okay. I, I I can the fourth grade teacher is teaching me geography, so Okay. I don't know how I'm gonna do. Um, now listen. So the praying mantis can actually turn its head a full one hundred and eighty degrees, okay? Uh, yeah. No other insects can do this. The reason that praying mantids or mantis, um, why they are able to do this, because they have a flexible joint between their head and their prothorax. So that's the little segment of the body right above that, that belly thorax. or that, yeah, that kind of thorax area thorax. that enables them to swivel their head. This ability, along with their rather, rather humanoid faces and long grasping forelegs, endears them to even the most entomophobic people among us. So this is this is a new word. Entomophobic? Yes. What? What does that mean? Entomophobic? Okay. So there's this thing called arachnophobia. Have you ever heard of that? No. Okay. It's, is it a disease or something? No, it's basically a horrible, horrible fear of spiders. Dad has a horrible, horrible feel of fear of spiders. Yeah, so he could almost be considered arachnophobic, okay? Now, people who just don't like bugs in general, and maybe they're kind of scared of them, especially when they start, like, flying in their face and, like, trying to get in their hair and, like, oh, jump like into Papa? their cokes. Papa's not too bad. It was just when that spider was trying to jump on his head and, like, bite his brains out. And he would have this big melon on top of his all other melon. <laughs> well, anyway, they call it entomophobic. Okay, so that's... Entomophobic? No, no. <coughs> that's incorrect. Entomophobic? Entomophobic. Entomophobic. <laughs> entomophobic. Okay, now, are you ready for me to just drop a, a really strange fact on you? Yes, yes. Drop okay. it, drop it. What do you think that praying, a praying mantis would be most closely related to? Poop? <laughs> I'm just guessing. What insect do you think a praying mantis would be most closely related to? Cricket. A cricket? Yeah. I could see that. That's like... Cockroach? Oh! <gasps> You got it, dude. Listen. La cucaracha. La cucaracha. Okay, listen. Mantids are most closely related to cockroaches and termites, okay? Termites? These are 
three insects that seem like they're totally different praying mantis, termites, and cockroaches, but they are believed to descend from one common ancestor. In fact, some entomologists group these insects into a super order, Dictotera, okay? Bictopera? Um, can you at least try? Dictotera? Got it! Got it! Try it again. Dictotera! Bictopera? <laughs> Dictoterra. Uh, I'm gonna have to fire you. No. I'm okay, first have to you fire you. First you hiccuped, then you coughed. Benny used to do <laughs> into the mic. That's why Penny's having to clean up the dinner dishes. Yeah, with her dad. Okay. So, but anyway, um, they they're basically considered like when we when we classify any kind of plants or animals we look at things from how they descend okay and we start to create these trees that are called taxonomic trees so if we say that you know a crocodile descended from a dinosaur we'd have the dinosaur kind of at the at the top and then we would have the different type of crocodiles coming down on these different branches. Well, this is the way that it works for praying mantises. They actually, praying mantises, termites, cockroaches, they're descending from one common ancestor, even though, to me, they look nothing alike. They look nothing. One's small, one's medium, one's ginormous. Well, the one thing I will say is that I do think that the praying mantids so there look if if you learn nothing else this podcast i think that it's praying mantids yeah that, hey, that's a good piece of information to know the plural form of praying mantis is praying mantids which kind of sounds cool anyway i see praying mantids over there there you go you used it in a sentence but anyway but praying mantids and cockroaches kind of both move in a really weird way i think cockroaches squiggle and they like, and then, um, praying mantids, like, stomp their way around. Well, they kind of both have that really weird, like, movement that's kind of like, creepy. It kind of, like, it's very alien, you know? Like how aliens... It kind of gives you the heebie-jeebies. Like, when we were checking out that one praying mantis there on the It was just gate, looking at us and, like, turning I kept expecting heads. him to be, like... Dude, lady, back off. And then, <laughs> yeah, fly in my face. Like, sometimes, you know, cockroaches will do that. Like, if you're over there, like, trying to, you know, stomp a cockroach to death or whatever, it will just fly in your face. Cockroaches fly? Oh, yeah. Some of them do. <gasps> but the, remember the ones that we had, though? They didn't. They were hissing. Yeah, they didn't have any wings. They hissed at us. I don't remember them ever hissing. Oh, that cockroach hissed at that turtle all the time. Man, I must have missed that. Anyway, I thought we could have... I would always have... look at them in the morning and that... And remember that one time that that cockroach got on that turtle pr to protect um, Shine? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we had... We used to have two hissing cockroaches named Shimmer and Shine. And unfortunately, they both passed away. But... They didn't make a baby, but that passed away when I was like six months old. Yes. They made they made one baby, and that baby died. We didn't yeah. even name that baby, did we? I named it Juniper. Juniper? Yeah. Okay, that's news to me. <laughs> no, I actually named it Max. That's what I like thought. Like it's dad. Okay. Because remember, no, that's, that's. There was Shimmer and Shine. That's Matt the second. I mean, Max the second, and then Max the first, and then Shine. Family history on cockroaches. Okay, we're getting off topic. We're getting off topic. Let's continue to talk about these amazing facts for praying mantises. Or mantids. 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 Okay. Now, a female praying mantis will deposit her eggs on a twig or a stem in the fall and then pr protect them with a styrofoam-like substance she secretes from her body. This forms a protective egg, ca egg case in which her offspring will develop over the winter. Mantid egg cases are easy to spot in the winter when leaves have fallen from shrubs or trees. 
But, now this is what Thought Company says, but be forewarned, if you bring an overwintering egg case into your warm home, you may find your house teeming with tiny mantids. Oh, jeez. So what does that tell you about what's important for those praying mantid eggs? Never take them in your house. Okay, definitely that. But what do they need to hatch fully? Heat. Heat, yeah. So Because the cold is like keeping them inside that eggshell. And it's probably slowing their metabolisms down. It's kind of like, you know, like the, the whole thing with, you know, certain animals that kind of hibernate and reptiles and all that kind of stuff. They need that heat to really get their metabolism going. And obviously the praying mantids need the heat to make their eggs hatch. Mm -hmm. And I, I wonder if a, a baby praying mantis is cute or is it, or do you think it's kind of creepy like a baby spider? Do you think it's creepier than its mother? Or do you think it's cuter? I don't know. Let's, we need to, we need to find some pictures of baby praying mantids. I want to see. I'm going to look it up on my phone okay. after. Okay. Now, listen. Praying mantises, praying mantids are famous for something that they do in their relationships. In particular, female praying mantises mantids are they like um black widows where they if they need food they kill their mate yeah so but this <sighs> is this is very specific so the female praying mantis will actually bite the head off of her partner oh jeez. <laughs> now now wait now listen to the reason that they say they say that when the male doesn't have its head, he is a better partner. Okay, now, so... What? <laughs> well, so this tells me two things. Number one, the praying mantis doesn't need its head to function. Oh, jeez. Does it function with its guts? Well, and so it must, it must point to the fact that the nervous system isn't totally centralized. So there's some, so it's, it's still working somehow. Now, how long it lives, I don't know. But it can, two. it can function without a head, okay? It can function two seconds without a head. Oh. Well, no, I mean, it's making it sound like, because it's going to need to fertilize the eggs, okay? Because this is specifically, and then, basically, she looks at her husband. What's up? john hey what's what's happening yeah we should get married let's you know let's go ahead and have these eggs and but before we get started i'm gonna go ahead and bite your head off oh gee okay and now and now john becomes a better partner a better dad without his head are you gonna bite dad's head off um metaphorically <laughs> I, b I bite his head off all the time but i don't think i don't think my mouth could really I, do you think his <laughs> head is big and bulky? Do you think he'd help me put away laundry more if I bit his head off? Just no. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have to gripe at him. Um, Matt, will you please put away the laundry? He'd go, why don't you put it away? And I'd say, why don't you put it away? No, why don't you put it away? No, why don't you put it away? You're getting off topic. <laughs> <laughs> you got me off topic. Okay, so anyway. No, I didn't. So, but now, but this is what scientists believe. Now, because this is one of the most famous facts about praying mantids is that the females will bite the heads off the males. But scientists believe that in the wild, this only happens about 30% of the time or a third. So if you imagine if there are three praying mantids couples, okay, it's only going to be one out of that three that's going to be losing his head. No, it's... That still seems like a pretty large proportion, but anyway, so it's it's not as common as you would think. He's going to lose his head now. <laughs> so, now, the mantids do use their front legs to capture prey. Um, like we said earlier, the praying mantis is his name because that when they are waiting for prey, they hold their their little legs in that upright position folded. It kind of looks like they're praying, right? Like this? Now, 
what Thought Company says is do not be fooled by this angelic pose because the mantid is actually a very deadly predator. If a bee or a fly happens to land within its reach, the praying mantis will extend its arms with lightning quick speed and grab the insect. Boom! Okay? Will it grab us? So, well, we're not an insect. But will it try to hurt us? Probably not. That's kind of how nature works, you know, just like sharks. Sharks kind of get a bad rep for being, um, like, you know, uh, people killers. And in reality, remember we were reading that book the other night that or they that... try to, they, they take test bites just to make sure that they oh, want to yeah. eat it? Because they'd rather eat, like, seals and um, fish and other things like that are really I fatty. I think that they would want to eat me because i mostly eat vegetables yeah and then also you um you're too squirmy wormy you'd be terrible prey i'd be punching its head off Mm, mm. and don't get overconfident okay why because you know we'll we'll see how big you are when you come across jaws or something Mm. a big great white my arm will be coming off (sighs) (laughs) make sure you speak into the mic or I'm going to be sicking a shark on you. Oh, jeez. Okay, now listen. Um, now, they have sharp spines that line their forelegs, okay? Now, what this enables them to do is to grasp their prey tightly as they eat. So, so they're going to, you know, shoot their arms out, grab their prey, and then when it struggles to try to get away the spines will dig into the soft flesh of the bug. Oh, you poked me. And so it'll basically be like... Having a shot? Yeah, except a thousand little shots that are holding you in there. Because there's spines that are holding the bug in there. I don't... If I was an insect, I would never go close to a praying mantis... That's probably, you gotta, you gotta talk it to the mic. I do not want to get in the grasp of a praying mantis. No. Okay, now, as far as other insects go, praying mantids are relatively young. Okay, here's the deal. The earliest fossils of the praying mantis date from the Cretaceous period, and that's between 146 and 66 million years ago. The primitive mantid specimens lack certain traits found in the mantids that live today. They didn't have the elongated pronotum, okay, or... I, d- I don't even know what that is. Pronantum? Yeah, the pronantum. Pronantum. Yeah. Um, and, pronantum. and they did not have an extended neck, um, and they lacked spines on their forelegs. I thought that they would say that, that they lack spines. I knew it. Look at you. You're psychic. No, I'm not! <laughs> Now, praying mantids are not necessarily beneficial insects, okay? Praying mantids can and will consume lots of other invertebrates in your garden, so they're often considered beneficial predators. But wait a second, wait a second. It's important to note that mantids do not discriminate between good bugs and bad bugs when they're hungry, okay? Uh, A praying mantid is just as likely to eat a native bee that we consider great because, you know, they're pollinators. And they give us honey. They give us honey. um, As it is going to be to eat a a caterpillar that we also consider a pest. Although I really like caterpillars. Remember we used to plant that bush where all of the caterpillars would come? I don't really like caterpillars because they eat all the leaves off of your plants. Yeah, but then it it grows back even better. Did you notice that on those um, milkweeds? So um, garden supply companies often sell the egg cases of Chinese Chinese mantids um, basically as biological control for the garden. But many of these predators do just as much harm as they do good. Okay? Mm Mm-hmm. Now... How many eyes do you think the praying mantis has? Two. How many ears? Zero. Okay, you're correct on the 
ears. I mean, the eyes. They have two eyes. Uh huh. But they only have one ear, which I thought was really ah! weird. I have two ears. Right. Most most mm. things are kind of you know two for two, except mouths. We only have one mouth. Yes. Okay. And we only have one nose. So they have two very large, what they call compound eyes that work together to help it decipher um, visual cues in its environment. But the praying mantis just has one ear that's located on the underside of its belly, just ahead of its hind legs, which means the mantid cannot discriminate the direction of sound nor its frequency. What it can do now, this is really cool, is it can detect ultrasound or a sound produced by echolocating bats. Now, why would that be important for a praying mantis? Does bats eat praying mantises? Bingo! Bats love insects. So a mantis in flight will essentially stop, drop, and roll in midair, dive bombing away from a hungry bat. I mean, that's kind of cool, right? Stop, drop, dive, and roll? Yep. Now, not all mantids have an ear, and those that don't are typically flightless, okay? Those are the ones that don't have the wings. So they don't have to get away from those bats that are super hungry and think it's Praying Mantis Thursday. No, Instead of Taco mantis... Tuesday, it's uh, Praying Mantis Thursday. Yeah. Or Praying Mantis Friday. So anyway, so Praying Mantis, they, they do. They look kind of like aliens. They're very strange. Um, but they're pretty darn interesting. And I think one of the most interesting facts to me is that they only have one ear. We did not get tongue-tied on this podcast. I got kind of tongue-tied. I always get tongue-tied when talking about... I did about... not get tongue-tied. <clears throat> what, what fact did you think was most cool? I thought the ear one was pretty cool. Yeah, that one where was Where it was, pretty like, strange. on its belly. I kind of knew about the females ripping the, the dude's heads off, but I didn't realize that it wasn't that common. I did not know that they literally ripped their mates' heads off. Oh, yeah. They're brutal like that. Have you ever seen them do that? No. But I'm sure that there are videos online, so. I want to see it. Okay. Well, anyway, well, thank you, everybody, for joining us. I hope that you thought that the podcast was interesting, fun, and entertaining, especially my co-host, Caroline, the great hiccup queen. No, no. <laughs> Um, if you like the show, please make sure that you subscribe, rate, and review because your opinion, your thoughts, it matters. It helps not only give great information back to me, but it raises the visibility of the podcast in the charts. And we are all about making this world a more equal and opportune place, one girl at a time. And we can't do that alone. Right, Caroline? Yeah. And thank you for listening. Now, what phrase do you like saying? You told me. Science life and... Girl power! Girl power! See you later!